Well, good morning and welcome to another day of lockdown and another day of Luke's Gospel. Uh, I'm still intending to do this every day to share with you what the Lord lays on my heart from different portions of Luke's Gospel. It's not going through every verse, but just the highlights as I read through the Gospel each day. It's also my birthday, so happy birthday to me, birthday in lockdown, uh, celebrating online with my family later on this afternoon, celebrating today because it's Good Friday, the day when we celebrate, commemorate when Jesus died on the cross. And our church will be having an 11 o'clock online prayer meeting via Zoom. Uh, if you don't have the link, uh, contact me and I'll send it to you. Uh, though you might be watching this afterwards. <laughs> um, also like to thank you for prayers for my father. He's out of hospital. He's at home, still not completely well. Uh, he has underlying health conditions, which is the phrase that we've been taught to use at the moment. Pray for my mother as well. She's the primary carer for him. Also prayers for Sue, please. Uh, she's in isolation. She had some symptoms earlier in the week, a uh, temperature and, uh, so um, she's got to get through till Tuesday, uh, locked up in, in the bedroom, uh, but uh, trying to be as dutiful a husband as I can, providing cups of tea, uh, biscuits, as, until we run out. Uh, but it's good to uh, concentrate on the word of God and to find courage from him and, and advice as well and recommendations on how to spend this time that we're in. You know, some of us are <clears throat> in isolation, locked down. We can't go out. We've got plenty of resources. I'm privileged to have a, a garden, which actually Sue does all the work in. Another category of people would be those who are in lockdown, can't go out, but they're in a flat. Some people may be five people to a room in a studio flat with kids. And then there are those who are working flat out serving us and saving us in the emergency and essential services, health workers, refuse collectors, those in the supermarkets, keeping our food flowing in. And for each one, the tensions are different. So I just want to share with you a passage from Luke's Gospel today. Uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Let's, let's read this together. Yeah. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he, when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will make them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or towards daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord answered, Who then is the faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, my master is taking a long time in coming. And he then begins to beat the other servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect, expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. The servant who knows the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Peter asks, you know, is this, is this for us <laughs> or is it for anyone else? And I think the answer is it's for you, Peter. It's for all of us. And we can think how we're going to spend the time. This is a parable often used to talk about the second coming of Christ. But the emphasis is not so much on Christ's coming, though it is that, 
but on what we're going to do now while we're waiting. The prophecies, predictions of the second coming of Christ are there in the Bible, but they're not there to encourage speculation about calculating the times and the seasons and the dates. Rather, they're there to encourage us to live right now, to be ready whenever he might come. So the emphasis is on how we behave now. And that's a challenge for us in this present situation. I read an article this week about somebody who was quite smug and self-satisfied regarding their, their lockdown as a chance to be like medieval monks or hermits in the desert, um, alone with Jesus. And, and it is a time to do that. But I think our life in London with supermarkets, etc., is not very much like a hermit in the desert. Uh, fasting and famished uh, all day, suffering, really. And I think part of the problem is, as well, for those people, those hermits in the desert, those monks, the isolation wasn't just a time to chill, get some essential oils, light a few aroma candles, and kind of just uh, chill and say a few chants and meditative mantras. It was a place of temptation. It was a place of warfare. It was a place of demons in the desert. And this too is actually a spiritual warfare. What are the thoughts that come up in our minds? What happens in our thought life <clears throat> as we're stuck at home or working too long and trying to relax? I knew one friend who was a youth worker, a very stressful job in an open youth club with local kids. And... Um, after the youth club finished, they would go back to their flat on their own and just drink lager. This was a Christian, born again, spirit filled, who couldn't relax any other way. Are we indulging in too much substance abuse? It might be drugs, it might be spliffing on the balcony, it might be a bit of wine, it might be too much food, chocolate, biscuits, just to get us through. It might be <clears throat> too much Netflix and I've heard people who are rationing their TV and not watching it till 11 o'clock at night just so they don't binge out and just kind of waste the day it might be self-harm cutting ourselves because we want to release the pressure and the feelings inside all kinds of things it might be depression as we just feel locked in and alone and isolated what happens to our thought lives and for our active lives at this time. Are we spending it as an opportunity to read scripture? And even if we do read scripture, are we doing it dutifully just because we have to and should? Or are we doing it because actually we do meet with Jesus when we do it? How many resolutions have been made to learn Chinese, uh, take up a new skill uh, for about a day or two, uh, and then uh, stop? Sue has been doing a course from Yale University in well-being. She got 100% in her online multiple choice quiz at the end of it. So she's a graduate of Yale University. I take my hat off to her. She's the most well-being person I know in the world. But what do we do with this time? It's a great opportunity. You see, what they're told to do, these servants, as they wait for their master to come, is to serve and to love others, and to do good for others. One of the solutions is to look outwards. Take the eyes of ourselves and look to others. In your block of flats, in your street, in your alley, this is a time for community leadership. We've been putting a little slip of paper into everyone's letterboxes uh, throughout this last three weeks, once a week just to keep in touch and to offer our phone number if people need help, to remind them about the clapping on Thursdays for our essential workers, uh, just to show a bit of leadership. We've also invited people to join in prayer with us at 11 o'clock today, whatever faith or religion they belong to, or none. Because it's a time for us to step up. At the end of the passage, it says, Jesus says, from the one who's been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. It could be a threat, but it could be an opportunity. As we show ourselves faithful in small things, then God will give us other things to be faithful in.
I had some friends once in one of my churches who said, oh, we want to be missionaries. We want your church to support us. And I said to them, I had to say to them, for two years you've been here. You haven't done anything. You haven't even cleaned. You haven't moved tables. You haven't certainly haven't evangelized or pastored anyone. You've done nothing. Why should we support you? We show ourselves faithful in small things. Reminding our next door neighbor that we could do some shopping for them. We've had, we've had offers from our neighbours to do shopping for us while Sue is in isolation and I can't go out either. But the most important thing, and actually I owe this insight to Sue herself, who shouted it out to me from her room. Verse 37 says that uh, it will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will dress himself to serve. We'll make them recline at the table and we'll come and wait on them. This is astonishing. This is uh, terrible, really. I mean, what master in the first century would lower himself to serve his servants? Wouldn't happen. It would be a reversal of the social order. But Jesus comes as one who serves. And he's, he's ready and waiting to serve you. At this time, yes, be ready, but... He's there for you. Jesus, the master, is ready to serve you. Let him know your needs. Let him know your failures and your inadequacies, your weakness. Let him know how you've failed again. Let him know. Let him know your fears and worries. Pour it all out to him. He's here. He's here for you. He's here to serve you. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you sent your, your son Jesus to serve us, to give his life for us on the cross, to give his life for us throughout his life. We praise you, Jesus, that on this Good Friday, we remember that you came and gave your life for us, the ultimate act of sacrifice and of service. And we pray that you will help us to receive your goodness today. We are always in the position of receiver, receivers, recipients. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being with us. Help us to reach out to others because you have given us so much. Help us to share what you've given us, your love, with others. Amen. Amen. So today's Good Friday. Uh, I'm looking forward to our prayer meeting at 11 o'clock. And... Um, some of you, I think, will be joining me, I hope. Tomorrow's Easter, uh, rather, Sunday is Easter Sunday. And uh, 11 o'clock, we'll be having our regular morning service uh, on Facebook Live and then shared on social media. At 4.15, our French language service will also be on uh, Facebook Live. Remember that our midweek service on Thursdays, Breathe, will also be at 7 o'clock on Facebook Live and then shared on social media afterwards. We also have small groups, and if you'd like to be part of a small group, let me know. These are meeting online on either WhatsApp or Zoom. If you have any prayer requests, let us know. Our intercessors are meeting, and I personally promise to pray for any request that comes in. And finally, we are taking uh, collections of small boxes, shoebox size, delivery box size, of uh, goods for homeless people who are in hotels uh, they've got somewhere to stay uh, but there's not much supplies for them just simple things non-perishable foods uh, washing uh, supplies um, notebooks novels um, pens to write things down with um, whatever let us know if you've got a box for collection and uh, we'll send somebody around to pick it up and distribute to one of the homeless people in the hotels so god bless you and god be with you and he is with you always. Amen.